Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Mr. House, which is a new game from designer Adam Kaluza, who in the past has done some very, very cool kind of extreme man versus nature survival games like uh, K the K2 series and The Cave, and also a neat little underrated fantasy combat game called Draco. But now he's moved into an entirely new uh, arena, which is a very, very cool game all about building your very own dream house, which I gotta say is a subject matter that I think has a very broad appeal. And so much so that I think the game is very, very smart that it comes with two modes. If I were to flip this board and flip our player boards, I could actually be playing the basic version of this game, which is a very simple, very straightforward game that you know you could uh, introduce anybody to. And since, I mean, I think anybody would enjoy the notion of building a dream house, I think it has a lot of broad appeal. But uh, today I'm gonna be running through the more advanced version, which is this side, which which has a lot more options and whatnot, but I'll talk a bit about the difference between the advanced and the basic and the final thoughts. But for now, let's start building. So I've already got the game set up. It's a two-player game. I'm the first player with 84 bucks. Jen has 86 bucks. And we also start with one brick, one concrete, one lumber, and one steel. Okay, and so, uh, you know, Jen's in the same situation. Let's get going. Now, the first thing that happens every round, and this game takes place over six rounds. I mean, as you can figure, it takes six months to build your dream house. So over these six rounds, the first thing we do every round is we go shopping. Because, um, you know, just this starting material plus the one worker we have, which I think is us, I think is actually, because this worker never goes away like the other ones. You can see the, over time the other workers leave, but this one always stays. But just with these, with just us building with just these basic materials, we're not going to be able to build much of a house. So we got to go get some more materials. And this portion of the, the shopping portion is basically a race because almost every one of these spaces is first come first served. And since I'm the first player, I'm going to get first dibs on some stuff. So where should I start out? Should I start out getting some bricks or some windows? Should I come over here to the office to get a work permit? Should I get some steel? You know, there's a, should I go to the expo and get some cool accessories for my house that'll in increase my end game um, points for having a better house, like, you know, a, a barbecue or a pond or whatever? Well, I think for starters, one of the things I, I could do is I could hire some more labor because I can't build this thing for myself. And if I look at the cards that came out randomly, and over the course of the game, more cards will come out. There's this one. For three bucks, I could get one extra worker that'll increase the quality of my house by one. Or I could pay six bucks to get two. So I could pay double and get two guys and one quality increase. Or I could pay seven bucks and get three guys. And now that's pretty cool. That's, that's, that's a big deal. That's a good return. So I think... I think I want to be, I want first dibs on the work market so I can get this really nice return card. So that means I'm going to come over here. Now my next, I know where I'm going to go, but now I got to choose which of my tokens am I going to send there. You can see they're all valued 0, 1, 2, or 3. And the number represents how many of the thing that I've, I've gone to get will I be able to get. So I think I'm going to send my one, one of my ones over here, and it goes face down. Nobody knows what it, what's there except for me. And that means I get first dibs on the work market, and I can hire one of these cards. Now, for all Jen knows, I might have put my three down. And if, you know, if Jen decides to follow me later on, if I reveal that, boom, this was a three, I'd buy all three cards, and Jen would get nothing. But, you know, that's the thing. I mean, she, you have to kind of anticipate what you think your opponents are going to do because, I mean, we are going to be stepping on each other's toes as we both go shopping at the same time. So that was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn. What is she going to do? I think she will start out at the expo. Okay. And now, again, I don't know if this is a zero, one, two, or 3, but I know Jen is going to make a go to either try to get this, um, I don't know what this is, sidewalling? What would you call that? Where is there's a it, that is extra wall and roof installation. She's gonna get some extra installation, or she's gonna to try to get the barbecue on the terrace, or I guess maybe it's a terrace for the barbecue. Well, I mean I don't know, but I know she's going for it. Unless of course this is her zero. Maybe she's just trying to get her zero piece out of the way. Who knows? But anyway, now it's my turn again. I get to place another one, and we're gonna keep doing this until everybody has placed all five of their tokens. Their shopping tokens. So now my next placement, I cannot, I can never come back to this space. And, but I have to move north, south, east, or west. So from now, I can go north to the bricks, I can go south to get some, um, some steel, or I could go west. 
And if I go west, I could either come to the expo myself, or I could come to this space to grab, to you know, basically hold on to first player. I think, though, I'm going to try and get some building done this turn, so I'm going to head south and I'm going to get some steel. Now, I already start with one steel, and what I'm planning to do is, I think if possible, this round, what I'd like to do is maybe, let's see, oh, although, wait a minute, so I got three, if I want to build, oh, oh. Let's see, maybe if I want to build two walls. Let's see, now I know I'm going to get these three workers, I'm going to have one. So I'm going to have a total of four walls. After we're done with all the placement, I've got to be thinking about which of these recipes am I going to be able to make. I know I'm going to have four workers, myself plus these three guys. Four workers could build two walls. And you've got to start with walls before anything else. I mean, you, you have to build in kind of an intuitive way. You can't put a roof until you've got a wall. You can't put a door until you've got a wall. You can't put a chimney until you've got a roof, and so on. So, if I want to get a good kickstart and, and build a couple of walls, I would need four workers, and I've got that, you know, because I could build walls twice. Let's see, and if I want to build two wooden walls, which would be worth two points at the end of the game, I need two steel and four lumber. So, I've already got one steel, so that means I need one more steel, so I'm going to send a one here. So, there we go. Now it's Jen's turn again. Where is she going to go? Let's see, I think she will... She's going to hire some workers, and she's hoping, hoping, hoping that I haven't put a three here, because if I have, she has wasted her time, and she won't be able to get anybody with this. Although, again, for all we know, this could be her zero. Okay, now it's my turn again. Let's see here. And now I have no choice. I have to go west. I can't go back north, because you can't revisit a place you've already been. So I've got to go west, which is to the door spot. Let's see. And um, now I've still got my zero, my three, and my two. Now, I'm going to use my three over here uh, because I want to pick up three lumber so that I have enough lumber because um, with three plus one, I'll have four. I'll be able to build two walls. So I'm saving my three for this. So I could put my zero here or my two here. Oh, you know what? Actually, thinking about it, I think I put my two over here. What the heck? I'm going to get two steel instead of one. All right. So now, moving west, I think I'll come here and I'll put my one. So I'm planning to hopefully buy a door as well. All right. Well, not hopefully. I'm first. It's a one guaranteed. I've got the only door that's going to be available. Okay. Now it's Jen's turn again. And let's see. Now she could follow me. She can't go back. Well, actually, she could. She could go back this way to grab first player. Or she could go south to try and get some steel. But she knows. She can see I've already got some steel. And so she's a bit worried about going that way because maybe there won't be any steel left for her by the time she gets there. So I think instead she will head north. All right, so there she goes. Okay, now it's my turn again. And I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to put my three here so I can grab all the lumber I wanted. Now it's Jen's turn again. She will, she has no choice. She's got to go west as well. So there she goes. And now I'm going to place my final. I've saved my zero. And again, I've got no choice. I can't go back the way I came, so I have to go north. So I'm putting my zero at the office, which is interesting. The office is really the only place a zero can accomplish anything. If you put the zero any place else on the board, you're basically just kind of skipping over that. But putting the zero in the office can actually still accomplish things. So that was pretty nice. I set my zero there, and now Jen's got one more. Where is she going to go? She, if she goes south, it has to be to take first player. And she would. She would become first player. Unless, of course, this is her zero. Or she can come this way to get some more cement. I think she'll do that. Okay, so we're done. <clears throat> we are finished with the shopping. Now, we start resolving it, and we do it in location order. We can see this is location number one. So if anybody would come here, we'd reveal this, and then we would reorder turn order. But nobody came here. So now we move on to number two, the office. I'm the only one who came here. We reveal a zero. And like I said, a zero anyplace else, you'd skip your turn. But a zero can do stuff here. Now, I've got a few choices. This zero, I, whenever you come to the office, you can get your permit. You, um, you're in no rush for that. But before the six rounds are over, you have to get your permit. There's one permit for every player. If you don't have a permit, your entire house is illegal and you lose. So sooner or later, you got to get the permit. But I'm not going to worry about the permit right now. I can always get that later. Instead, my other options are I can increase the quality of my build, which is what I'm going to do. So currently, at the beginning of the game, my quality is crazy low. It's at negative three. That means I'm going to lose three points. Once my house is done and I score points for it, it'll be a low quality house, so I'll lose three points. But I'm going to increase my quality, so now I'm only going to lose two points. And as I increase my quality more and more, you could ultimately get to where your quality is actually worth five bonus points at the end of the game.
Now, my other option was I could have, I could have gone to the office and just worked. And what I do then is I multiply whatever number I chose um, times four, and I make that much money. Although in this case, I'd make zero bucks. So I'm not going to do that. But if you're getting low on cash, you could say send your three here, and three times four means you could make 12 bucks instead of getting your permit or getting or increasing your quality. Although again, whether you sent your zero or your three, your quality only ever goes up once, or you can only ever get one permit. So anyway, so that was that. Now let's move on to space number three. That's Jen. And she put her one here. So now she gets to buy some concrete. And so she gets to buy one. And the cost, we can look down here. Concrete currently costs three bucks. So Jen just paid one, two, three bucks. Moving on to space number four. Jen is here again. Zero. She is not going to buy anything. She just put this zero so that she could leapfrog over here to get some concrete. And let's see, space number five. Jen got three. Jen is going to buy all three of these bricks. So if somebody else had tried to come here, they'd be SOL. So Jen's going to buy three bricks, and bricks are currently at their almost lowest price, three bucks. They could go down to two, but right now they're at three, so Jen just paid nine bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's space number four. Now space number, now this is the only place where Jen and I had any conflict. Let's see what happens. We flip, oops, and I am the first player. I get first dibs, I am hiring one, and as planned, it was gonna be this guy, which cost me seven bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he goes into my first free worker placement space, or my first worker placement space. They always go here. If I'd already, if I was buying another one right now, they would come in and they would slide the first one over. If I was buying a third one, these would slide over. The new worker you get always good because this is the fresh worker. All right, but anyway, I only I only hired one worker. And so I'm done. And uh, let's see, Jen was grabbing all her pieces back. And so I grabbed that. And now it looks like Jen wanted to hire one as well. So now she is going to hire one. And she gets um, from the remainder. I think she'll just pay three bucks. One, two, three. And she'll just, well, yeah, she'll just get the single one. Yeah. Will she? I haven't even been paying. I've, she hasn't really been thinking about what she's going to do. E yeah, she'll just get the single. All right. Right. So, and that cost her three. Now, I should say, um, both Jen's and my quality has increased one because we both got workers that increase one quality. And so nobody's gonna hire these poor guys. All right, so then we move on to space number seven. Here I am all by myself. I'm getting two steel. And steel currently costs four, so I just paid eight bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Moving on to space number eight. All right, me, I'm gonna buy a door. A door is expensive. Doors cost 10 bucks. So I just went from 69 to 59, and I bought, but I bought the only door, all right. And so we get these back. And then um, coming over here. So I am buying three lumber, one, two, three. And lumber is currently at three. So that cost me nine bucks. So 59 down to 50. And so I left one lumber behind. And um, finally, space number 10, Jen. Ah, now this is kind of wasteful. The expo space is interesting. Every other space on the board, the number you put down is how many times you get to do the thing. But whenever you go to the expo, you can only get one card, no matter what number you put there. The higher the number, though, determines who gets first dibs. This one is not a first come, first serve. So Jen's paid two because she thought maybe I'd come over here and I'd do a one. And that means Jen would have still gotten first dibs because she went higher than me. But Jen, unfortunately, wasted. She should have put a one here. But she didn't know. I mean, how could she know? If I'd come here, she wanted the two so she'd get first dibs but as it is she gets first dibs so remember these are coming up later she can either get the hibachi or she can get the insulation now the interesting thing is if she takes this this is worth a, a bonus point at the end of the game but there's a set collection element because the if jen has this she wants to get more red cards because the more matching cards of a given color you have at the end of the game the more bonus points you get Whereas if you, if you have a whole bunch of, there's three cards, there's green, red, and what's the other color? Kind of a yellow, yellow color. So you want to have a set collection of matching colors. But anytime you want, once Jen has this, if she ever needs to, she could discard this, remove it from the game to get its bonus, two bricks. So, um, you know, because it's a competition. It's basically whoever has the most of a given color. What is it? How many points do you get for having the most of a given color? D, D, D. Um, oh, D, D. Right. Points are scored for, let's see. Uh, right. Complete house. Quality. No loans. Loans. Player. Is there still a tie? 
Where is the thing for how many po color points you get? Points for individual house parts is shown. Garage, equal uh, privilege cards, right. For each color, the player who has the most cards of that color gets one point. So there's three potential points on offer if you have the majority of reds, greens, and yellows. And if you ever feel like you're giving up your majority, you can always turn those cards in, throw them away, you know, toss them so you can get those build materials. Um, let's see. But, I mean, it turns out you might not need to, in which case you can get the point. I think Jen will start out with the Hibachi. Since she didn't get any steel, if she ever needs some steel later on, she could trade this in to get some extra steel. All right. So that was that. She grabbed that. And, um, let's see. Oh! And, oh yeah, I already did this. I just didn't take it. I got my quality from there. All right. So that's it. We're done shopping. And, um, right, so now we move on to the actual building phase. And now everybody can do this simultaneously. You don't have to wait one after another after another. So, um, let's see, actually, wait a minute. Do we do the prices? No, we do the prices at the end of the round, don't we? I think we do. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So now we're going to build stuff. And remember, everybody has all these recipes of what they can build. I have four total workers with, um, and it takes two workers to build a wall. So if I, I could have my two workers and my other two workers, I'm going to try and build two wooden walls. So I'm going to put all four workers to that task. Two, building two walls requires four wood and two steel. So here goes two steel, goes back in the supply. Here goes my four lumber back into the supply, and I've used all four of my workers for that, and I've successfully done it. I am starting to build my wooden house. Okay, and I've basically scored two points because I've got two walls here. Now, I could have built them like this. I could have built them like this. So I'm starting to build a two-story house, but I'm going to, so far, I'm going to, maybe I'll expand to a second story later. But for starters, I'm just going to put them like here and start out my little dream home right there. Okay, it's got no doors, and, um, you know, and so I've got a door, but, and in fact, you can see to build a door requires... A door and a steel, so I've got it, but I don't have any more workers because I've already used up all my workers. So I'll have to wait till later to install my door. And um, so, which will be worth another point when I do it. And by the way, if you build a house without a door, your house is no good and you lose. There are certain requirements to, for your house to be valid and for it to score points at the end of the game. You have to have a building permit. It has to have a door and only one door. And um, every wall has to have a roof. I think those are the only requirements. Okay, but then on top of that, you can also put windows on. You can put in chimneys. You can build a an ex, you can build a garage extension. You can do other stuff as well. But the bare bones minimum, something like this, yes, even by itself. You know, here's a I, I put a roof on. This would be a legal house. It wouldn't be much of a house, but it would be a legal house, and it would be worth three, four. Five. This would be a five point house. But obviously, you, you, I have bigger plans than that. Okay, so there we go. So that was it, and, you know, and everybody does this, and so I've still got building materials left over that I'll use in a future turn. All right, now Jen, let's see, I, and I wasn't even paying attention to what she was gonna do necessarily, but I guess she only has two workers, so she'll put her two workers together to build herself a brick wall. So there, there's her two workers. A brick wall requires a cement and two bricks. Okay. And so she built a brick wall. She's still got a lot of stuff left over. If she had uh, more workers, well, I mean, she does. She'll be able to build another brick wall next turn, but she doesn't have any more workers. But next turn, this guy is going to untap and is going gonna, is gonna to be available so he can build more walls. But we had to tap him to indicate that he can't build anymore. Now, strictly speaking, this guy is tapped as well, but since he's on the board, we don't really have a way to indicate that. We just have to remember that he is also built. So... We're done. Everybody does that simultaneously. And at the end of the first round, I have built two wooden walls. Jen has built one brick wall, but she also has a nice hibachi um, barbecue terrace, which will be worth an extra point if she's the one who has the majority of greens at the end of the game. So strictly speaking, right now we're tied. Although, and, you know, and we both have, although I've got more workers and Jen's got a, a little bit more resources than me. Okay. So we're done with the building. Now, the last thing we do every round is we just do some basic cleanup. First of all, we have to change prices. The market fluctuates. So what we do is we look at bricks. Bricks this round, when Jen bought them, were at three. We look up here, though, and we see how many bricks are still available to buy. 
And the price of bricks is either going to rise or fall based on that. Now, there are zero bricks. No, I, sh I should say, by the way, we're in a two-player game. So ignore the three and the four-player. If we're in a three or four, we'd be paying attention to that row or that row. But in a two-player game, we have to check. Are there three, br three or more bricks? If so, the price would drop by two because yeah, there's a lot of bricks on the market. But if there are um, fewer than three bricks, then the price is going to rise. And in fact, there are no bricks. So bricks have just ri risen in price. All right, so we do this for lumber. Lumber, um, the, um, oops, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, crap, I, I read. That it's not the three, it's not the three. It, these are the target numbers. Durr, I thought that was wrong. This is going to be the replenish. After we're done um, evaluating, there are going to be three bricks to buy here. It's going to refill with three more bricks. But I'm sorry, I should have said, if there are one or more bricks, one or more, the price would rise. But if there were two or less, the, you know, the price drops, and that is it. Or yeah, I'm sorry, ah, this is hard to say. Okay. Um, ugh. I'm saying this backwards, but you know it, it's intuitive, but it is kind of backwards to look at it. The price is going to rise because there is one or less, so the price rose. If there were two or more, if there was a glut of bricks, the price would fall. But uh, since there, I wiped out all the bricks, the price rises. Now we do this for the other ones. The lumber, okay, there's one. There's only one left, and so if we were at two or less, that means, again, the price rises. Let's see, now on to the, so now this one's interesting. If, well, actually it's not. If there were two or less, the price rises. If there were three or more, the price would fall. So the price rose again. Uh, cement, um, if there were one or less, the price would, um, would, would rise. But in this case, since uh, there's two here, the price on cement actually falls. It got cheaper because there's a glut of cement. Now we do windows. Um, the price falls because there's two or more. And for doors, the price rises because there aren't any. So the prices have all readjusted. Some things got cheaper, some things got more expensive. And now we refill. Regardless of how many there are here, we're going to put out three more cement. Let's see, I think that's right, right? We don't fill up two, three. We put out three regardless. Um, replenish building materials, according to the number of players, just like the yeah, correct number is shown. All right, uh, there should be four. Oh, no, 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 we just fill back up. So it goes back up to three. There should be two. There should be three bricks here again. There should be um, four lumber here again. And there should be one door here again. And there should be um, ba -ba -ba -ba, four steel here again. And this is all for the two players. And you know, obviously with more players, there would be eight or nine steel. And you know, the thresholds for price drops would rise or fall as well. Okay, so we refill everything. Um, we also have to um, put out new worker cards. So there's now two more spaces for more workers. And interestingly, since nobody hired this guy, he just got $1 cheaper. He only costs five bucks now. And the longer something stay, uh, workers stay out without getting bought, the cheaper they get. If it ever gets to the point where they're free, then they just leave because they feel very unappreciated. So you replenish the worker cards. Now, nobody got this insulation, so it is removed from the game. These slide down, and now these are going to be available in round three. Although we're now moving on to round two. And um, there you go. So that was it. We are on to round two. I am still the first player. And so I, we will once again start running around the board and doing some shopping. And, hmm, you know what? Actually, I was, I was about to say, you know, now we can go to the extended playthrough and I will show you some more shopping. Um, but it's going to work exactly the same way. We have our five guys. We're going to run around. We're going to try and get more materials. Then we're going to use the materials. Let's see. If we hire more workers, oh, oh, by the way, our workers are available again. But, oh, the last thing that happens, I forgot to mention, is our workers slide down. Over time, no matter what, we are going to lose our workforce. Once he's slidden off, once he slid off the board, he's gone. I've gotten all the work out of him I can. So while I've got him, I want to use him as much as possible. But I mean, I've also made a space so that I could hire more workers. Um, although again, if I were to hire two uh, worker cards, they would all slide down and eventually that my first guys would slide off the board. So that's an important thing too. I forgot to slide our workers into second place and over time they will eventually leave. And you know, and the game continues like that. So I don't know, should I do an extended playthrough? Because I will just be showing more stuff. Eventually each of us have to pick up a, um, our work permit. Eventually we're going to run out of money. You know, because we're, I mean, I'm spending money really, really fast and we'll eventually get down to zero. If you ever get down to zero bucks, you immediately take a loan 
and bump back up to 20. And at the end of the game, if you have no loans, you get plus one point. If you've taken six or more loans, you lose 12 points. But um, you know, things can get pretty expensive. Um, you know, to build a garage requires two additional doors, and right now doors are at 11, so it can cost a lot. So it's not all that uncommon to blow through all your cash over the six rounds, take a loan. Um, although remember, if you don't want to take a loan, you can always come to the office and you get four times the number you put here of money, so you can make money that way too and not incur negative points. But that's if you're going to make money that way or go loan, or just don't buy as much stuff. And instead, try to make sure you keep majorities on all these colors so you can get bonus points that way because you'll have less because this is not a super high scoring game at the end of the game those three points you can get for color majorities that could swing the game in your favor that's the equivalent of you know having built three more walls um etc etc so yeah i think those are the basics so i don't know that i need to do an extended playthrough so tell you what why don't you go on ahead and hit the button that's on screen right now for final thoughts and you go straight to final thoughts which by the way are going to be a very special final thoughts because i am going to be joined by a very special guest final thoughts host and we are going to talk a little bit about our individual experiences playing mr house so if you'd like to see that you can go on ahead and hit the button or follow the show notes in five four three two one